so we'll begin with the next topic of uh, the mathematics chapter top the mathematics subject in which uh, we have come across the previous uh, chapter is vectors yes in our previous chapter we have this is just like a continuation of the, the same chapter vectors there is nothing much to differentiate between that and this so i want to do that chap this chapter along with the vectors itself though that is classified as two different chapters three dimension coordinate geometry and one more as vectors but this is just the continuation of vectors okay so let us consider it as a just continuation of vectors that is previous chapter so i want you all to quickly revise the topics which i have already learned in the vectors and the first exercise of three dimension geometry is completely based on those formulas okay which you have already learned in vectors first one is about the direction cosines and direction ratios so direction cosines and direction ratios you have already learned direction cosine is nothing but the cosine of an angle made by the position vector with respect to x axis y axis and z axis direction ratios are nothing but the components of a vector simple as that suppose if i consider a vector a1 i cap a2 j cap and a3 k cap a1 a2 a3 are the direction ratios yes and uh, simply these are components are direction ratios now let me find out the unit vector of that given vector unit vector is nothing but the vector divided by magnitude of that vector correct the magnitude of that vector is given by square root of individual component squares addition of individual component squares correct so square root of a1 square plus a2 square plus a3 square i'll find out the magnitude and i will divide the magnitude by the full vector of that one that is individually i will separately and write it like this okay so i hope you can understand what i have done here individually i have separated the uh, denominators and i have written it in a component form that is component form of a unit vector i have written so components of a unit vector are nothing but direction cosines simple as that okay here what i have done i have just simply found out the components of a unit vector and then i am simply writing the components of the unit vector that is nothing but direction cosines okay so this is what you have already learned and these are the problems which you have already done as well okay so in this chapter also you will be starting with this same formulas and the first exercise is completely based on this and little more of this one that is relation between direction cosines you already know that cos alpha is nothing but l cos beta is m and cos gamma is n l square plus m square plus n square is equal to 1 which you have already learned in the previous chapter then also you need to remember recall the vector joining two points formula okay that is x2 minus x1 i cap y2 minus y1 j cap z2 minus z1 k cap and that will be helpful in solving the first exercise problems and uh, once you have noted down all these things i want you all to quickly solve the first exercise and then resume the video whatever i am talking about in the next topic okay so first i want you all to go through this understand this recall the previous chapter and finish the first exercise i also will be sending you all the picture of first two pages of this chapter three dimension in that picture go through the example sums as well as the exercise and finish it off and send me the picture and any doubts you let me know okay after that you can resume with the video this video itself so this is the continuation of that chapter now we are completely coming into the three dimension geometry system okay so this is the first derivation which you will be learning about in three dimension geometry okay so first thing which you need to know is right in the previous years and that is in the 11th standard or the first pc you all have come across a line in a plane equation for a line in a plane that is y is equal to mx plus c straight line equation of a straight line we have come across uh, equation of a straight line joining two points y minus y1 is equal to m into x minus x1 those type of things that was for the line when it was on the plane that means on the x and y axis only right now what we'll be dealing with is what if a line is not on the board but outside randomly floating on the space how can i frame an equation for that okay so framing an equation for a line in a space has two different methods first thing we will assume or let us say that if the line passes through a given point and has a given direction okay so this line is passing through a imaginary given point and it is having a particular direction okay that is one way i can find out the equation or derive the equation then the second way i can derive the equation in that is it possesses sorry it passes through the two points two points okay so either it can pass through one point and we know the direction 
or it can pass through two given points but I don't know the direction. It depends on what type of condition is given to me and based on that I will derive the equation. Okay. First, right now I will be going through the first type of equation deriving that is when the it passes through a given point and is parallel to the given vector b vector. Okay, so I'll give you all a clear picture of what I'm deriving right now. So this is nothing but the first condition whatever I have told in deriving the equation of line in a space. So let us assume, so this is what they are talking, uh, equation of a line at a given point. That means, let me consider A is a given point, okay. Let us imagine that A is some random point in the three dimension space. And it is having, it is joined to the origin, it is joined to the origin like this to O and that vector, the position vector of that A is A vector, clear? So it's something like this, I'll draw it roughly here in this side, A is the given point and from here to here I'm joining and this is nothing but my A vector, okay? So that much is known right now. Then it is parallel to a given vector B, which means there is a random vector which is which direction is known to me okay this this b vector which you can see which is floating in the three dimension system this is the point a and there is point uh, there is vector b randomly here okay its direction is known to me so main intention of giving you all this sentence parallel to the given vector b is that the direction is given that is what this condition comes into picture here b's direction is already known to me so which means this the line or, or the vector which is passing through that point A will be in the same direction as that of B vector. Okay, So it is parallel to the B vector and let us assume another point in the same, parallel, uh, same line as that of A and call that as point P. And now I am going to find out the equation for this length line L that is AP vector. Understood? So here this line L is passing through two points. One is a known point, given point. One more is an imaginary point and this line is parallel to the vector B. Okay, so the two position vectors I can draw is from A to origin and P to origin. A to origin, the position vector I'll call it as A vector. P to origin, I'll call it as R vector. Okay, so this is the diagrammatic explanation what I want you all to understand clearly. So quickly I'll recall once again. Uh, the imagination, imagine these things, whatever I am telling, there is a random point in three dimension space and that point, there is a random line which is passing through that point, okay, and that point is having a position vector, A vector, okay, position vector to origin. Then in that same straight line, there is another, let us consider a point, we are considering the point P, it is, it can be anywhere in this, this side also it can be, anywhere it can be, let us consider a point P and join it to the origin and call that position vector as R vector. This is my assumption or this is my creation along the length L. And this point length L which is passing through A and P both points is parallel to the known vector B vector. Okay, A known vector is known in this three dimension system that is B vector and this vector whose equation I am supposed to find is parallel to the B vector. Clear? So this is the diagram explanation. So with that condition, since AB, AP vector, AP is a nothing but a vector along the line, line L. Okay, AP is a vector along line L and AP vector is parallel to B vector. That is the first given condition to me. Yes or no? I have already told B is parallel to L, which means AP vector is parallel to B vector. Since AP vector is parallel to B vector, I can write it as AP vector is a multiple of B vector or in other words, AP vector by B vector is nothing but a constant that the ratio is same. If the, uh, the two vectors are parallel, then their ratios must be same. Component ratios is same. Yes or no? Or so I can write it like this AP is equal to lambda into B vector. Lambda is any number. Lambda is any number, any real number. It can be simply 2 into also, it can be 2 into B vector. Anything something like this. This is the condition for my parallel, parallel conditions. What do we have come across? Also, collinear condition which we have come across. Okay, so that, that is the same thing. Now, let me consider AOP, triangle AOP, triangle law of vector addition. Let me write it here. AOP, OAP also I can write, triangle OAP, triangle OAP. From the vector addition of triangle law, I can tell that 
AP vector, AP is along this direction, AP vector is nothing but OP vector minus OA vector. The actual condition is something like this, that is OA vector plus AP vector is equal to OP vector. Isn't it? The actual condition is something like this. What I am doing is OA, I am shifting that side and this condition I will get it. So this vector plus this vector is equal to this vector is the triangle law of vector addition. From that I will rewrite it and write it in the form of AP vector is equal to OP vector minus OA vector. Clear? Then I will substitute their corresponding values which I have already found out. AP vector is lambda into B vector. OP vector is R vector. OA vector is A vector. Which we have already known. OA vector is A vector. OP vector is R vector. And AP is this much. And let me shift the a the other side, it becomes a plus lambda into b vector is equal to r vector. Let me rewrite in the proper way. r vector is equal to a vector plus lambda into b vector. And this is the equation for my line which is parallel to the given vector. Okay. So this is the vector form of my equation. So if they ask me to find a vector form of uh, so and so vector, I can just stop my answer here. But if they ask me to find the Cartesian form, Cartesian form is nothing but the component form. Yes or no, we have come across in vectors, finding the component form and all that. So right now in Cartesian form, let us assume the, let us give them the components, whatever vectors I have considered right now here, I will give them the components. That is, let me take this B vector, this B vector, whichever is a parallel thing which we have called, let me imagine their components be AI cap plus BJ cap plus CK cap. Okay, so you can take any letters you want, but most preferably A, B, C since it is given in the same, the textbook method itself I'll follow. So it is B vectors components are A, I cap plus B, J cap plus C, K cap. Clear? Then let us take the A vectors component as X1, I cap, Y1, J cap and Z, K, Z1, K cap. That is A point component is X1, Y1, Z1. Okay, so that is the component of this one and this is the component form. Here, Cartesian form or component form. Then, R vectors. R vector, let it be any component x, y, z. P is any, my assumption, no, I have told you that time. P is any point, random point. Let me assume the points are x, y, z. So, its components will be x, i cap, y, j cap and z, k cap. Clear? So, these three are the vectors in Cartesian form or component form. So, then, I will write the vector form once again and substitute these components form or the Cartesian form in these vector forms. Okay. So here R vector is nothing but X this one. I will substitute it here. A is nothing but this one here. B is nothing but here. Lambda into B it is. So lambda will be outside the bracket and here. So the next step what I will do is I will multiply the lambda inside the components. It will be lambda into A, lambda into B and lambda into C. Then I will add the components whichever is present in this side, leaving out the i outside. That is, i is common for x1 and lambda a. So x1 plus lambda a, i cap, y1 plus lambda b, j cap, it is lambda b, j cap, and z1 plus lambda c, k cap. Clear? So this one I have added and written it in the component form right now. So let me compare the left hand side and right hand side. You can see. In the place of x here, it is nothing but x plus lambda i. Yes, look into this carefully. This x and this I can equate. That means these two are equal. I will keep it this here, like this. x is equal to x, x1 plus lambda into a. Then let me shift the x the other side. It becomes x minus x1 is equal to lambda into a. Then a I will bring it to the denominator. x minus x1 by a is equal to lambda. Clear? Similarly, let me compare the other ones. That is y is equal to this one y plus lambda into b. I will write them here. Then I will shift the y1 this side. It becomes y1 by y minus y1 divided by b is equal to lambda again. Same thing for the last one. This one and this one. Compare. Bring the z that side and bring it in this way. So you can see all the three things which I have found out are nothing but equal to lambda or equal to constant. Isn't it? So I can tell all the three are equal to each other. Isn't it? I will erase this portion. So please pause the video and then if you have noted down before itself, note this part before. So this portion continues here. So here it is. So this thing, if all the
things are equal to each other, uh, equal to lambda, I can tell x minus x1 a, so x minus x1 a divided by a is equal to y minus y1 by b is equal to z minus z1 by c. And this is nothing but my Cartesian form. Okay, this is the Cartesian form of same equation. So, equation of a line passing through a given point and parallel to a given vector b has have two forms that is one is vector form and one more is Cartesian form. Okay, I hope it is clear. So, if it is not clear, please rewind the video once again, go through the same video and uh, let me know if you have any doubts and please prepare a proper notes based on this and next video I will be preparing the uh, example sum for this as well as I will be sending the exercise question exercise questions based on this topic okay so please go through this and understand clearly everything starts from here this is the basic level of three dimension geometry so i want you all to clearly understand and any doubts please let me okay bye thank you